As for that part of the garden, my beloved, which is situated so gloriously at the summit of that height, where dwells the glory, not even its symbol can be depicted in man's thought. For what mind has the sensitivity to gaze upon it, or the faculties to explore it, or the capacity to attain to that garden, whose riches are beyond comprehension? Praise to your justice that crowns the victorious. Perhaps that blessed tree, the tree of life, is, by its rays, the sun of paradise. Its leaves glisten, and on them are impressed the spiritual graces of that garden. In the breezes the other trees bow down as if in worship before that sovereign and leader of the trees. In the very midst he planted the tree of knowledge, endowing it with awe, hedging it in with dread, so that it might straightway serve as a boundary to the inner region of paradise. Two things did Adam hear in that single decree, that they should not eat of it, and that by shrinking from it they should perceive that it was not lawful to penetrate further beyond that tree. The serpent could not enter paradise, for neither animal nor bird was permitted to approach the outer region of paradise, and Adam had to go out to meet them. So the serpent cunningly learned through questioning Eve the character of paradise, what it was and how it was ordered. When the accursed one learned how the glory of that inner tabernacle, as if in a sanctuary, was hidden from them, and that the tree of knowledge, clothed with an injunction, served as the veil for the sanctuary, he realized that its fruit was the key of justice that would open the eyes of the bold and cause them great remorse. Their eyes were open, though at the same time they were still closed, so as not to see the glory or their own low estate, so as not to see the glory of that inner tabernacle, nor to see the nakedness of their own bodies. These two kinds of knowledge God hid in the tree, placing it as a judge between the two parties. But when Adam boldly ran and ate of its fruit, this double knowledge straightway flew toward him, tore away and removed both veils from his eyes. He beheld the glory of the Holy of Holies and trembled. He beheld too his own shame and blushed, groaning and lamenting, because the twofold knowledge he had gained had proved for him a torment. Whoever has eaten of that fruit either sees and is filled with delight, or he sees and groans out, the serpent incited them to eat in sin, so that they might lament having seen the blessed state. They could not taste of it, like that hero of old, whose torment was doubled, because in his hunger he could not taste the delights which he beheld. For God had not allowed him to see his naked state, so that should he spurn the commandment his ignominy might be shown him. Nor did he show him the holy of holies, in order that if he kept the command, he might set eyes upon it and rejoice. These two things did God conceal as the two recompenses, so that Adam might receive by means of his contest a crown that befitted his actions. God established the tree as judge, so that if Adam should eat from it, it might show him that rank which he had lost through his pride, and show him as well that low estate he had acquired to his torment. Whereas if he should overcome and conquer, it would robe him in glory, and reveal to him also the nature of shame, so that he might acquire in his good health an understanding of sickness. A man indeed who has acquired good health in himself, and is aware in his mind of what sickness is, has gained something beneficial, and he knows something profitable. But a man who lies in sickness, and knows in his mind what is good health, is vexed by his sickness, and tormented in his mind. Had Adam conquered, he would have acquired glory upon his limbs, and discernment of what suffering is, so that he might be radiant in his limbs, and grow in his discernment. But the serpent reversed all this, and made him taste abasement in reality, and glory in recollection only, so that he might feel shame at what he had found, and weep at what he had lost. The tree was to him like a gate, its fruit was the veil, covering that hidden tabernacle, Adam snatched the fruit, casting aside the commandment when he beheld that glory within. Shining forth with its rays, he fled outside, he ran off and took refuge among the modest fig trees. In the midst of paradise, God had planted the tree of knowledge, to separate off above and below, sanctuary from holy of holies. Adam made bold to touch, and was smitten like Uzziah. The king became leprous, 
Adam was stripped. Being struck like Uzziah, he hastened to leave. Both kings fled and hid in shame of their bodies. Even though all the trees of paradise are clothed each in its own glory, yet each fails itself at the glory. The seraphs with their wings, the trees with their branches, all cover their faces so as not to behold their Lord. They all blushed at Adam, who was suddenly found naked. The serpent had stolen his garments, for which it was deprived of its feet. God did not permit Adam to enter that innermost tabernacle. This was withheld, so that first he might prove pleasing in his service of that outer tabernacle. Like a priest, with fragrant incense, Adam's keeping of the commandment was to be his censer. Then he might enter before the hidden one, into that hidden tabernacle. The symbol of paradise was depicted by Moses, who made the two sanctuaries, the sanctuary and the holy of holies. Into the outer one, entrance was permitted, but into the inner, only once a year. So too with paradise, God closed off the inner part, but he opened up the outer, wherein Adam might graze.